this lab, we will examine the properties of non-metals. As always, before beginning any experiment in the laboratory, be sure you are familiar with laboratory safety requirements. For a demonstration of basic lab safety rules, you can watch our video entitled Lab Safety. On the periodic table, non-metals are located on the right side, except for hydrogen, which occupies the space at the top of group one on the left side of the table. Non-metals exist in three physical states at room temperature. Of the 20 stable non-metals, six are solids, one is a liquid, and 11 are gases. Two non-metals are unstable, radioactive, synthetically produced elements, so we are not yet certain of their physical states. Non-metal solids are usually dull in color, with little or no luster as seen with these samples of sulfur, selenium, and iodine. The one exception is diamond, which is a form of carbon. Diamond has the brightest luster of any substance on Earth. Most nonmetals are poor conductors of electricity. If a substance conducts electricity, the light on this continuity tester will come on. As you can see, sulfur does not conduct electricity. However, carbon is an exception. Graphite, a form of carbon, is a good conductor of electricity. Nonmetals are not malleable, ductile, or hard. Some nonmetal solids, such as graphite and phosphorus, are powdery. A few nonmetal solids, such as iodine, are crystalline and brittle. If we grind up iodine crystals, they crush to form a powder. Carbon is an exception, since diamond is the hardest natural substance on Earth. Although a diamond is hard, it is still brittle. If sufficient force is applied, even a diamond will shatter. Now that we are more familiar with the properties of nonmetals, let's examine two common nonmetal gases, hydrogen and oxygen. As we stated earlier, hydrogen is the only nonmetal located on the left side of the periodic table. It sits at the top of group one. All of the other members of group one are alkali metals. Even though hydrogen is a non-metal, it is placed in group one because it has only one valence electron like the other members of this group. The atomic number of hydrogen is one, which means an atom of hydrogen has one proton and one electron. The density of hydrogen is only 0.09 grams per liter, which makes it the lightest element on Earth. In fact, the density of hydrogen is only about 7% of the density of air. This property makes hydrogen perfect for inflating weather balloons. Aluminium reacts with sodium hydroxide and water to produce sodium aluminium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. We will use this reaction to produce four samples of hydrogen. The reaction rate is greatly increased if the sodium hydroxide solution is hot, but instead of heating the solution with a burner, we will let chemistry do the work for us. First, we add solid sodium hydroxide to this reaction flask. Then, we add the aluminum powder. As you can see, the reaction is taking place slowly. To speed up the reaction, we pour 150 milliliters of water into the funnel. When sodium hydroxide dissolves in water, it completely ionizes, which produces a great amount of heat. The heat generated by the reaction may cause the solution to boil. To prevent the boiling solution from being forced up into the funnel, we use an apparatus called a pressure equalizing addition funnel. As the reaction heats up, the sodium hydroxide reacts more quickly with the aluminum to produce sodium aluminum hydroxide and hydrogen gas. 
The gas flows through this tubing into a receiving flask with water. The water in the receiving flask cools the hot gas and absorbs any sodium hydroxide that might accidentally travel through the tubing. Notice the bubbles of hydrogen gas in the receiving flask. The hydrogen gas rises to the top of the receiving flask and flows through the glass tube into the beaker. We will use the beaker to capture some of the gas in a test tube. To make sure that we collect nearly pure hydrogen gas with only a little oxygen, we will collect the gas through the process of water displacement. Why do you think we use water displacement to isolate hydrogen? One reason we use water displacement is to produce a nearly pure sample of hydrogen gas so we can investigate its properties. The second reason will be discussed shortly. After filling a test tube with water, we close off the open end and invert the test tube with the open end under the surface of the water. While keeping the open end of the test tube under water, we move the test tube until it is directly over the glass tube. The bubbles of hydrogen gas displace the water in the test tube. After all the water has been displaced from the test tube, we lift it out of the beaker and close it off with a stopper. We repeat the process with three more test tubes. Now that we have four samples of the gas, let's examine some of hydrogen's physical and chemical properties. What can we say about the color of hydrogen gas? Notice that the gas is colorless. What about its odor? Before we determine its odor, we need to issue a word of caution. Never try to smell a chemical substance unless you are absolutely certain it is safe to do so. Hydrogen is safe to smell, but if this was chlorine gas or sulfur dioxide, the results of smelling it could be fatal. Even if you are certain that a substance is safe to smell, you should never sniff it directly. Instead, hold the sample below your nose about 15 centimeters from your face and waft the gas with your hand toward your nose. If the substance has a smell, you should be able to detect it. From this procedure, we can tell that hydrogen gas is odorless. Some substances can be identified by their taste. However, we offer a similar word of caution. Never taste a chemical substance unless you are absolutely certain it is safe to do so. We will follow a similar procedure as we did with smell, but this time we will inhale some of the gas through the mouth. If the substance has a taste, we should be able to detect it. We notice that hydrogen gas is also tasteless. One chemical property of hydrogen gas is its flammability. Hydrogen gas is extremely flammable when it mixes with oxygen. We can test the flammability of hydrogen with a burning wood splint. Since hydrogen is lighter than air, the gas will stay in the test tube as long as we keep the tube inverted. The hydrogen gas near the mouth of the tube mixes with oxygen and is ignited by the burning wood splint. If the tube contained more oxygen, the hydrogen would have ignited explosively. This is the other reason we collect hydrogen gas by water displacement. We want to be sure the sample is not explosive. To demonstrate the explosive combustion of hydrogen in air, we will use the same chemical reaction of aluminum and sodium hydroxide to collect some hydrogen gas in balloons. For this last part of this demonstration, we have moved the hydrogen-filled balloons outside. Observe what happens when this candle flame comes near the balloon. The flame melts the balloon and the explosive mixture ignites. 
Let's see that again. The next non-metal we will examine is oxygen. Oxygen is in group 16 on the right side of the periodic table. Oxygen is placed in group 16 because an atom of oxygen, like the other members of this group, has six valence electrons. The atomic number of oxygen is eight, which means an atom of oxygen has eight protons and eight electrons. Oxygen is denser than hydrogen, but its density is still quite low, only 1.43 grams per liter. To produce oxygen, we will use the thermal decomposition reaction of sodium chlorate. If enough heat is applied to melt sodium chlorate, the compound decomposes to produce liquid sodium chloride and oxygen gas. A device that decomposes sodium chlorate to produce oxygen is called an oxygen candle. Oxygen candles are used in aircraft to produce oxygen in case of an emergency loss in cabin pressure. Our oxygen candle will use a flask containing sodium chlorate. Sodium chlorate will spontaneously decompose at about 250 degrees Celsius. Now we heat the compound with a burner. As oxygen is produced, the gas flows through the tubing and into a beaker of water. Notice the oxygen bubbling into the water. We will collect some oxygen gas in test tubes by water displacement, similar to the procedure we followed to collect hydrogen gas. Now that we have collected some oxygen, let's examine its properties. Using the same steps we followed before with the hydrogen gas, we have determined that oxygen is colorless, odorless, and tasteless. Oxygen is not flammable like hydrogen, but it does support combustion. Combustion is a high energy chemical reaction between a fuel and an oxidizer. A fuel is any substance that will release usable energy during a chemical reaction. An oxidizer is a substance necessary to support combustion. Since oxygen supports combustion, it is an oxidizer. We can test the oxidizing ability of oxygen with a wood splint. However, this time, we blow out the flame before we insert it into the tube. When we insert the glowing splint into the oxygen-rich atmosphere inside the tube, the flame is rekindled. Let's conduct one more demonstration of the oxidizing ability of oxygen. This time, we will melt some sodium chlorate in a test tube. If a fuel is added to the test tube, the oxygen produced by the reaction will cause the fuel to burn violently. The fuel we will use is a gummy snack. A gummy snack consists of sugar and gelatin both of which will burn. Watch what happens when we drop a gummy snack into the test tube of molten potassium chlorate. The heat of the reaction ignites the fuel, which burns violently in the oxygen produced by the decomposition of sodium chlorate. Let's watch that again in slow motion. As you can see, oxygen is an excellent oxidizer. The same amount of energy is released inside your body when you digest a gummy snack, but the reaction inside your body is much slower than the one we see here. However, gummy snacks do release energy quicker than other foods. They provide a quick burst of energy, but they have no lasting nutritional value. In this lab, we explored the properties of two nonmetals, hydrogen and oxygen. In our next lab, we will examine the properties of another nonmetal, sulfur. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs>